Hey guys, uh, this is Jose and this is tutorial number 9. Um, as I mentioned before, um, we're going to make a tutorial on lists to see uh, what is the functionality of them and, and how they operate. Uh, so we're going to just focus on that. Uh, it's going to be also a very short tutorial, but I think it's going to be very handy. Um, I'm going to just write here. And we're going to do a few operations of this. Um, I will point out, uh, probably in the Vimeo account or on the YouTube channel as well, um, some other tutorials that are really good on, on lists because lists are generic to Python. And but but I think that um, there's really good material out there as well to just get to understand list, lists better. Uh, having said that, uh, we will do the basics. So what is a list, right? Uh, we're going to do a list that is going to be um, basically a collection of elements. If you are familiar with processing or with um, Java, uh, you would know that there, we have arrays um, or array lists. I would say that lists, in a way, it's kind of a mixture of both um, because they are dynamic. They can basically change uh, the number of elements uh, and, and the elements that they contain. Um, and they have a, a, a lot of other interesting operations as well. So let's see an example of that. Uh, so we define them with a um, square brackets like that. So basically, that would be an empty list, right? So if you say something like print my list, um, you would see that you're just printing, in this case, this element meaning something empty. Um, let's put some stuff in here. So let's put something like 54, 22. So we have a few elements inside. And again, if we print it, we'll see. Those are the ingredients inside the list. Uh, but the interesting thing about um, lists in Python is that they, they contain, they can contain different kinds of elements. So we could have something like a string, right? Uh, in this case, cat as a word, specifying with this uh, column, that, uh, quotation mark, sorry, that um, that this is a kind of a string of letters. So you could see that the list operates fine, it doesn't ask us to, to have one specific kind of um, value. In this case, we are having integers, strings, and now I'm adding a float. And OK, this is interesting. And you can see how, how this uh, list is operating. Right? So, uh, Let's start uh, using some of the functionality that the, the list can, can give us. Right? So how do we add a new element to a list? If we have this list that we obtain somehow, that we need to do some Rhino operation, uh, we can add elements to that list. So we can do that by saying my list, I'm just going to copy it, dot append. And then we can append any element. And this element that we will add to the list would be basically at the end, right? Um, so in this way, we are actually adding elements to the end of the list. Um, and that's something that you would be doing most of the time. Perhaps maybe if you want to do a, a line or a curve, you're going to start making an empty list and then just going through certain calculation and adding that element, appending that element to the list, and at the end of the list. The loop, perhaps, you will make um, such a line with, with those ingredients. Right? Um, one um, other thing that we could do, let's say if we had two lists, I'm going to rename this list to my list01, and I'm going to copy it and paste it, rename my list02, and I'm going to change the ingredients to something like 8, comma, dog. 33, right? Um, I'm gonna at this point I'm gonna just comment out this line so we can have it as a reference, but not as a, the one that we will actually use. And I'm gonna say something like my list one dot extend my list okay. right. So Let's see what this line would be doing, right? And we're going to print it out as well. Uh, so, this 
no such thing. That's my list. My mistake there. Right. So extend is saying add all the elements of list two to list one. Right. So that's also quite interesting. Um, if you're familiar with Grasshopper, these are kind of some of those operations that that are in the list uh, commands. Um, and let's see a few other that that might be a little bit more tricky in, in, in the way we, we have to understand them. Um, because it's, they operate differently than in other scripting languages. Right? So, for instance, if we say something like my list or one now, uh, dot remove. And here, the, the function remove is, uh, is asking us, like, what do you want to remove, right? Um, Python is asking us what element here do we want to remove. In this case, we have to specify the actual ingredient, let's say 54. Remove 54 from this list. And it's working, right? Um, I say that it's different because, in, in, in for instance, in, in Java or other scripting languages, you might want to say, I want to remove the first element of this list. And we'll see how to do that as well. Um, without really knowing what that element is. Um, so what is that element? This is the element number zero. That's the index of the element. Um, this is number one and this is number two. So we have three elements as a total. And but we start in zero. This is the element zero. That's very important to understand, right? Uh, so if we try this with thirty-two you'll see that we can remove from the list any of the elements inside that. Um, and as I said, how do we actually remove the element 0, the first element of the list? So we could say something like my list of one dot pop element 0. And let's see. Right. So this line is, is doing exactly the same that this line, if we would have put the 54 there. Um, but this one is saying, I don't really care what it's in there. I just care about removing the first element of this list. right? And this is very important because most of the time, especially with geometry, you, you won't know what it's inside the list. Let's say there would be a point or a vector or something that you won't be able to use remove and give the specific values of that vector. You will, you want to remove uh, the index value, right? In, by the index value. The other interesting thing is that this um, pop uh, function actually returns this 54 in the form of a variable, right? So if we say something like print x, we can see that pop not only removes 54 but actually takes it out and it allows us to create a variable with that value. That's also very interesting. Um, so I was actually like when I jumped into Python the first time I was just looking at like how do I count how many elements do I have in my list and I was constantly doing for loops and just needing to know how long the list was. Um, the thing is that Python doesn't really need you don't really need um, uh, how long a list is to do a for loop because you can do a for loop by saying for i in my list. Something like that, right? Um, so it, basically you will go through the elements, each one of the elements in the list without having to specify the length of the list, right? Um, but that's just another issue. Um, but there is a way of actually finding how long your list is. If you are calculating something, you are kind of, let's say, searching through some geometry and you, with some criteria, and you want to count how many points you, you keep adding these elements, let's say, to a list, and then you want to count them. Well, there is a function you could say print line the length of the list. Right. So, I move that one. so len 
parentheses list will tell us that there are three elements in the list, right? So that is uh, the way in which you would find out how long um, the list is. And now oh, there's one more. As we're talking about indexes, and this is perhaps the most important thing that we will be working with lists and indices all the time. Every kind of um, Rhino operation that we do will return us a list with where the index 0 would be something, in the index 1 would be something else, and most of the Rhino commands return lists. So, so we have to be ready for that. Um, let's use the index command now. So we're going to say print dot my list sorry, dot index zero, right? So, oh, sorry. And this is what is uh, perhaps interesting of this index command. Here, what we, we say in index, we say basically what is the index of cat? Right, the element cat. What is its index? And it's index two. If we say twenty-two, what is the index of twenty-two? We're asking print the index of twenty-two. That is number one. And if we put fifty-four, we get the zero. Right. So again, uh, here, like we can actually. Um, oh, there's one more thing, but I perhaps. We can mention if we have just numbers. I think sixty-six comma seventy-seven comma three. We could say something like my list dot sort and print my list of one dot sort. Uh, right. So sort, um, we need to add this parentheses for sort to work, right? Uh, so if we run it now, we'll see that the same list that we had before um, now has been sorted. It has been organized with a smaller number. Uh, at the same time, we could say something like my list and reverse. And then we have the inverted version of that sorted list, right? So um, I think that it would be still better to just work with, um, as we're working with examples, um, you will start getting more understanding of, of lists and how are they're used within the, the Rhino syntax. But just as a reference, uh, I wanted to go through some of these ingredients, some, some of these uh, functions that lists can offer. Um, so we can have uh, the base to move forward. That's it.